Okay, so to carry on our NRL thing, yesterday I, I did the uh, Newcastle Knights and predictions for this following season coming up in, in next year. We'll get up to the Gold Coast Titans, the team that finished one place above me in the table. Um, this team looks like a disaster, to be honest. I'm, I'm being kind, I don't want to be harsh to the players, but they've lost Jared Hay, they've lost McQueen, Tyrone Roberts, uh, several other lesser known players have gone Super League or other clubs. Anyway, um, they finished second bottom last year. Their depth has been hacked off. Like they, They've just lost a lot of depth. Big known players. I know Jared Hayne hasn't been playing well when he was there. He didn't quite gel with, with his teammates or the coach. But to lose someone like Jared Hayne, to lose someone in the pack like McQueen, to lose Tyron Roberts from your halves or fullback is a big, big, big loss. Big loss. Um... And over the and they've lost Greg Bird in the past, and they 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 have had players, and they've lost those players. They can't retain them. They've had off field issues, on on going back a while. Um, they've had ownership issues, so things are happening that are affecting the running of the team. Now the ownership issue has been resolved. They are the youngest club in the NRL. They were brought in ten years ago, so they they've had now 10 11 seasons to to compete in the in the competition um they they've got into the finals a few times they've only had one wooden spoon so it's not all doom and gloom but next season coming up this this season coming up in the new year i i can't see them challenge. i mean the newcastle knights team look far more exciting and they've added a bit of depth and they've added a bit of more talent this side just look they look like bottom feeders. But we'll see how West Tigers do as well, because obviously they're in the midst of rebuilding their squad as well. So we have to see how the salary cap affects things. More signings will take place the day I do this video. I mean, I'm doing this video in December. By the time the season comes around in the Auckland Nines in February, March, and then the full season in April, a lot of signings will be made. They would have Every club would have looked at their salary cap, how much room they've got, will they meet the minimum requirement, like Newcastle get players onto those contracts to make them cap compliant um, we don't know what injuries will, will be sustained, I mean Josh Hodgson for example at Canberra is now out at the beginning of this, this following season because of his knee injury that he received in the World Cup semi-final so players in the World Cup got injured got suspended so we have that look forward to, some certain players have retired um, and this is where the Gold Coast, and I've made a list of a few things, um, they've lost a lot of depth and that that's the worry of it all. They've lost a lot of depth. Not necessarily the most talented players, but a lot of players. I was looking at their, their squad from this year, just the season just finished till you know the squad they have now. The season's done, and they've released players and traded players and stuff. They've lost a lot of depth. Even if it's just average players, they are still experienced heads that can guide younger players through. And when you're losing someone like a Tyrone Roberts, that's a big loss. Big big loss. Jared Hain, whatever you think of him. And was he disrupted or not? The amount of effort they put in, big loss. But, on the plus side, with those players leaving, the salary cap has a huge, nice bit of money to play with. So there is still hope that they can sign players before the season starts. But I see this team as possibly being the wooden spoon. It's possibly. I'm not going to predict that, but it, it's not looking great with the amount of depth they lost and the off-field issues that the club has had over since its creation basically there have been off-field problems there's been scandals with players there's been ownership issues um, the Jared Hayne deal and this is something that's going to come up when I do the Parramatta video as well is have Gold Coast and Parramatta broken the rules to get him to, to terminate his contract early and then move below market value um, and that's a big thing going on in rugby league circles is did the Jared Hay move breach rules basically that the NRL has actually set out so a player cannot be moved for below market value whatever that market value may be judged at um, from what I've, I've read and I've seen online it's, it's about 600,000 Australian dollars is his market value for a contract it looks like he's moved for about a uh, hundred grand less than that about five hundred thousand dollars so have they undercut the market so Parramatta have skipped out him being put on the open market because he was never put on the open market because um, he was near the end of his contract anyway he didn't want a contract renewal so 
he was valued at one point something million Australian dollars, and he's gone for five hundred thousand. So that's an issue, and that will linger. Um, and should be investigated, and we'll see because Paramount have also breached the salary cap not that long ago. So there, there are both these clubs are involved in that. But going forward, West Tigers the next week go tomorrow. I'll do that in the morning. I mean, I could do. I'm going to try and aim to get all the videos done by the weekend. Um, simply because I'll start my new job and I'll have less time to do it and then I'll be able to do one or two videos a day but at this, at this moment I want to get as many of these videos up and get you guys watching because I know you guys like the rugby league on this channel so I've got to give what people want but if you're a Gold Coast Titans fan oh, it's all not doom and gloom but I think guarded optimism you've got to get off to a good start this season coming up if you get off your rocky start with the lack of depth that there is there and with some young halves and some young young players and basically an average squad of players there's no real big stars in their team at the moment um, that I can pick out unless David Mead is, has stayed there I, I haven't really been following a lot of the tra I've only been following the Mitchell Pearce and Jared Hayne transfers but if, if Mead's still there that's, that is some hope but I say again, you've lost McQueen from the pack, and he's he's a key player. Um, you've lost Hayne, you've lost Tyron Roberts, and you've lost a lot of other depth players as well. Over the last few years, it's not just this year just gone, which was a horrific season. The year before, they got into the finals. And yes, Parramatta were docked points, but they still made finals footy. So the, the fall they've had has been big. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you are a Gold Coast Titans fan, uh, have some guided optimism. Don't be over-optimistic, and don't you know believe this side's going to win the comp. It is not. It, this this side's got a lot of work to do, but there is gap in the salary cap for them, and there is four months before the season starts, so they can amend those cap issues and uh, amend the squad issues. But at the moment, that squad's just not going to be good enough. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll have some more videos for you soon.